Welcome back to our channel, Coraljax. In this video, we're visiting another Neolithic site in North Wales, Corsa Geddol. Situated in the old parish of Clan Doywe, an area which is full of the remnants of our Neolithic past. Just a few miles away is Gwerinainion, a monument we explored last week. And also nearby are a pair of Cromlech in Dyfryn ar Dudwy, which we'll feature in our next video. Like those other local sites, this one boasts spectacular views, with Araria on one side and the stretching coastline on the other. The name Corsa Geddel comes from the 16th century manor house, which is close to the site, but in some old books we found references to it being called Arthur's Coit or Coiton Arthur, a name that has been given to an incredible number of these monuments. Also in common with many of the cromlechs that we've visited, there's very little written about this site online, which is why we've had a good dig through some old books to see if there's any more information to be found. Of course, these books were written at a time where archaeology looked a lot different to how it does today, and was still heavily influenced by the political and religious views of the times. But always bearing that in mind, there's plenty to be learned from the old antiquarians, and it's interesting to read about these ancient sites, written from a different cultural perspective of times gone by. So please find links to free websites, like theopenlibrary.org, in the description down below to read in full the books we reference in our videos. In a book simply titled North Wales and published in 1907, Alfred T. Storey mentions this monument when he writes, Corsa Geddel, the ancient seat of the Vaughan family of Pensarn Station, with Gate Lodge said to be after the designs by Indigo Jones. Near at hand is the cromlech known as Arthur's Coit, Coit and Arthur, reputed to have been thrown by him from the top of the neighbouring Molfra and in the act impressed with his fingerprints. Unfortunately, we didn't read this until after our visit, so we didn't have a chance to look for these imprints. But if you've seen them, please let us know in the comments and link a photo or a video if you have one. The oldest reference we could find is from around 1870 or 1872, printed in John Marius Wilson's Imperial Gazetteer of England and Wales, which simply says, a cromlech called Coiton Arthur, or Arthur's Coit, lies near the lodge and is fabled to have been thrown by Arthur from the summit of Moilfre. As we mentioned, this is just one of many ancient sites whose name refers to legends of King Arthur throwing what is now the capstone of an ancient cromlech. Existing variations include Carrig Coiton Arthur in Newport, Coiton Arthur near St David's, and Arthur's Stone on the Gower Peninsula. But a hundred years ago, many more sites also bore the name and even Pentryphan was referred to as Arthur's Coit in some texts. This repeated application of the same name certainly caused some confusion among writers of the time, leading to descriptions of sites in entirely different parts of the country being included under the same chapter title, a confusion that we have the pleasure of sharing in today. But with their original purpose and title already likely lost to time, Christianized stories explained them with legends of King Arthur playing a game of coits with the devil saying that the stones grew larger as they flew through the air, or that the legendary figure threw large stones as a display of his mighty strength, or with Mine Ketty that he simply removed a stone from his shoe and tossed it, but it flew many miles through the air and of course grew as it did so. Other variations follow the same storylines but attribute the act to a local saint rather than King Arthur. Many believe these stories of Arthur have roots in much older tales. In Celtic mythology, the other world, called Anun, is entered through a cromlech, a portal dolmen, and Arthur is believed to have entered one such dolmen, possibly our local Pentryphan, to access the other world in his search for the Holy Grail. Wales is the home to many Arthurian legends, and one theory is that the name is derived from the 5th century Welsh word art, which means bear, and ur, meaning man. Therefore, Arthur is said to literally mean bear man. The bear influence for the name of King Arthur is supported by late Latin writings, which give the name Artursus, which combines the Welsh for bear, Art, with the Latin counterpart, Ursus. But others say that the stones were previously named bear stones because of a connection to the great bear constellation, Ursa Major, and that the symbolism of strength continued from there. We'd love to hear what you think, so let us know in the comments. Another text that names the site as Coiton Arthur is from 1921, in the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historical Monuments and Constructions of Wales and Monmouthshire, Volume 6, The County of Merionet, it says, Corsa Geddel Cromlech, on a field to the south of Corsa Geddel House, is a ruined cromlech called Carrig Arthur or Coiton Arthur. 
One end rests upon the ground, and it is evident that the cromlech has been dismantled at some previous period. The capstone is 12 feet long, and its greatest breadth 8 feet. The boulders that help to support it are scattered about, and there's such a mass of fallen stones lying around and beneath the cromlech as to suggest that it was once covered. Visited 18th of October 1913. The final quote we will include was also printed in 1921 in an inventory of the ancient and historical monuments and constructions of the county of Merioneth. Of the prehistoric monuments of the county, by far the most numerous are the ruins of the circular stone enclosures which are known as well from traditional report as from actual scientific exploration in various parts of Britain to have been the dwellings of a primitive people. There can be little doubt that many of the Merionethshire examples are genuine remnants of early man, but it is equally certain that a considerable proportion are not of the antiquity of which they are generally credited. A number of these, in the parishes of Clanaber and Llanthoiwi, were visited in late autumn when many were found to be practically waterlogged and in their then condition were altogether beyond possibility of occupation as dwellings for however short a time. He goes on to say, On the uncertain problem of whether all cromlechs were originally covered by earth or stones, the study of the Merionethshire examples does not help towards a definite solution. The great Carnethi at Hengwim were manifestly intended to cover the huge cysts which partially exposed remain still in position but it may be questioned if the Dovrin Cromlechai were ever so hidden. While the debate around which sites had a covering mound of stones and which stood as freestanding structures continues on until this day, the idea that these sites were once human dwellings has generally been dismissed. But the assertion that a considerable proportion are not of antiquity is a strange claim indeed. Certainly there are examples of stone circles and monuments being erected in modern times like Druid's Temple in North Yorkshire, built by William Danby on his estate at the end of the 1700s, an odd folly whose purpose was to house a silent Druidic hermit, as ornamental hermits were quite fashionable at the time. Or more recently, Brithdeer Mow Stone Circle, near Newport, Pembrokeshire. It was created in the year 2000 by erecting stones found in the area that were thought to be the remains of a Bronze Age stone circle. But the identity and location of these waterlogged monuments that the author claims are not of antiquity has eluded us so far. So please do subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of future videos where we'll update you of any new information. And we'll see you next week when we'll be visiting Dufferin Ardudwy. Thanks for watching.